Welcome to the Fermat tutorial series. My name is Markus Scheidgen and this is part of our first set of tutorials on publishing and exploring data with Nomad. In this video I explain how to manage and publish data with Nomad. I will show you all the necessary steps to go from data on your hard drive to a Ciderbit UI. Before we start, let's have a brief look at the current Nomad website. The landing page has the links to our current official installation as well as links to running beta and test installations. The version and links might change as we progress the Nomad development. In the video description, you will find the links to those installations that I'm using here. There is one link to the official Nomad and one link to a test installation. The test installation allows you to try the full process without really publishing anything. On the official Nomad installation, the final steps of the process, like publishing and uploading data and creating a DOI, are permanent. While you can browse Nomad and search and download for data without an account, you need an account and login if you want to upload data. All data you provide will be provided under the Creative Commons Attribution License. It will stay your data and we need to attribute you as the author. Creating an account is easy. You probably have done this a thousand times. Simply fill out the form and provide your name, email and affiliation. Your account will be created automatically and you will get an email with the activation link. After this, you can simply log in and activate the publish functionality. Let's have a look at the upload page. Here you can manage all your uploads. An upload is a collection of data that you want to manage and eventually publish together. You can imagine an upload like a project folder on your computer. It can take many files and an arbitrary subdirectory structure. Uploads are a means to organize your data, collaborate with colleagues and publish related data as a whole. How you eventually use uploads is up to you, but we recommend to assemble larger uploads that represent individual projects. On our Nomad installation, an upload can be up to 32 GB in size and you can have 10 unpublished work in progress uploads at the same time. To create an upload, you can press the Create button and this will bring you directly to the page of the new upload. Here you can manage this upload, provide files, manage contributors, edit additional metadata and control the published status of your data. The upload page shows a four-step process that consists of uploading files, processing your data, adding additional metadata and eventually publishing the upload. Before we go through these steps, let's name our upload. This helps you to organize your uploads and has no further influence on how the data is represented in Nomad. Okay, now let's upload some files. In the video description, you'll find some data examples that you can use, but of course, feel encouraged to use your own data. On top of the Dropbox, you see a list of supported file formats. You can drag files to this box or simply click on it to open the file selection dialog of your browser. You can upload individual files, or if you have a zip or targz file, you can upload a full directory structure in one go. Nomad will extract all archive files automatically. You can use this repeatedly to successively build your upload. In future Nomad versions, we will expand this functionality and also allow to delete and move files. Uploading will automatically trigger the processing of uploaded files. In this process, Nomad will go through all your files and recognize files with supported formats. Those supported files will be passed and Nomad creates database entries for them. In our example upload, we mix data from a variety of different simulation codes. You can see the recognized main file for each entry, the use parser and the processing status. As with all Nomad tables, you can change the columns here and click them to change the sorting. On large uploads, you can paginate the entries on the bottom of the table. You can also click the details button to go to the entry page. Our tutorial video on data exploration will go into more explanations here. What might be interesting for the processing, especially if there should be errors, is the log tab. Here you can see log entries, including possible warnings and errors from parsing your files. Codes are evolving and parser issues are unfortunately unavoidable. We also have a video on how to use and potentially fix normal parsers locally in case you want to dig deep and help us improve the parsers. Let's go back now. After the processing finishes, you can add more files and have a look at the existing files in your upload. The recognized files and respective entries are also marked in the file viewer. The next step in preparing an upload for publication is adding more metadata. Until now, we uploaded files and let the parsers do all the work, but we also allow you to add additional metadata. These are things like comments, references to online resources and datasets. But metadata also includes your co-authors. This is especially important and we request that you truthfully list all involved people. The same norms as for paper publications should be applied. Let's have a look at managing other users first. This button opens a dialog that allows you to control who can contribute to your data and who is allowed to review your data, even if it's not yet published. You can search and add any Nomad user to be either a co-author or a reviewer. 
You can also invite new users to add people right away, even though they might not have yet an account. All co-authors, including you as the main author, will be listed as authors of your entries. Reviewers are not mentioned publicly. For your co-authors and reviewers, this upload will also appear in the uploads list. Now let's have a look at the entry metadata. This button allows you to edit all entries of the whole upload. Alternatively, you can also select individual entries and edit them separately with this button. The metadata edit dialog allows you to change the comment, add URLs as references, here you can list related publications for example, and datasets. While comments and references are strictly informative, datasets allow you to curate related data. Datasets work similar to text, labels or album on other data sharing platforms. You can add entries to arbitrary many datasets and thereby freely organize data. Datasets are also the preferred way to refer to your data and you can create a DOI for datasets that you can use in your papers. You can create datasets directly here in the dialog or choose from an existing dataset. Applying the changes to your data should not take long. If you change the columns on the entries table, you can also see the metadata. This is useful if you decide to change individual entries. Finally, you can publish your data. At this point, all information is only visible to you and to the users that you added to this upload. Publishing will make the data available to everyone. When you do want to publish your upload, you can decide on an embargo. Publishing your data is necessary to get a DOI. The embargo will allow you to publish data while still restricting its visibility. For example, this might be useful for the review period of a paper. Entries of embargoed data will be findable, but only you and your reviewers can look at the raw and processed data. You can lift the embargo at any time. After you press the publish button and confirm, your upload is published. You cannot delete it anymore. You can also not add any more files. However, you can still edit the metadata. This brings us to the last part. How do you reference your data, for example in a publication? The most reliable way to refer to your data is through datasets. We already saw how to create datasets and add entries to them. Now let's have a look at our datasets. The datasets page will show you all the datasets that you have created. If you click on our example dataset, you see how the dataset is represented. It shows all the entries and allows the search within large datasets. On the datasets page, you can delete datasets and add a DOI to your datasets. You can only create a DOI for datasets with published data. If a dataset has a DOI, you cannot delete it anymore. You can also only add new entries and not remove any entries from datasets with a DOI. Let's create a DOI for our example dataset. Be aware that the DOIs in the test installation are not registered and won't really work. The real DOIs from the official NOMAD installation will resolve to the dataset page of the respective dataset. From there, your readers can explore all entries, download the raw files and process data. This concludes this tutorial. You saw how to upload and publish data with NOMAD. Thank you for following this tutorial. You'll find example data and links to NOMAD down in the video description. See you in another video.